Hey guys, this is Shantae with Brown Sugar Talk on the Black Unicorns. So, when it's got Brandon Clark came to my apartment, all I was doing was trying to help him. He was, he said he was down here in Illinois, searching through stuff and living on the street or something like that. I don't know. So he kept telling me that he can come help me. And then I called my mama. My mama said, yeah, he can help, you know, all this different stuff. Okay. When he's telling me he going to come help me, I'm thinking he coming to help me with my son. And I told him I needed help with the business because I was pregnant, right? And I knew that I wouldn't be able to continue to do business by myself because I was having a baby, okay? When he get there, he started trying to take over everything. And I'm like, wait a minute, you can't take over everything, right? So uh, one person, Marla, Marla was like, Shantae, he trying to, he going to mess up your life. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, she she is not lying. When Marla, I, he, all of a sudden, he just wanted to live on the streets. He was like, he wanted to be on the streets. He stopped taking his medicine. When I noticed that he was saying something from the papers, I was, when he said something, the, the, uh, the police officer said, if you do anything to him, it's going to be on you. That's what the judge told Marcus Boyd at court. So nothing uh, nothing that's happening has anything to do with Brandon Clark. He is not my friend. He is not the person that I want following me. So cause that's what this skeevy guy looked like. Um they they look like versions of Brandon. And it, and they act like it too. They like this guy he was talking about how people steal your energy. That's exactly what Brandon would do. Like I'm already taking I was already taking care of the baby. And he would do that even when I went to the hospital. I had to tell him, don't let him around me because he'd steal your energy like he'll take it. You see, he just, it's something wrong with him. So he'll just come and take all your, and it's like he don't have no kind of, no kind of, um, what is it? Like he don't have no morals. He just really rude. And it's like, or he feel like that's his. Like it's just, he can take it because he feel like he that close to you. He's not close to me. I don't want nothing to do with this man. And every time a man like him come around, that's built like him, that look like him, that walk like him, that talk like him, even when people do it, it is so fuck. I have an anxiety attack that day. Yes, last night I had an actual anxiety attack. And I was telling you the truth. I did not forget details or anything. So when um when I got ready to move out of my apartment, for whatever reason, Marla got really upset. She's the one who came downstairs and kicked my door. And I think she broke the frame of my door. It wasn't me. It was her. And I'm like, why is Marla upset? Like, why is she didn't upset? Upset enough to come down. And she thought about pushing me and my baby off, like, off the steps. They even had somebody come down and be like, Shantae, she, she could have hurt you and your baby. All this different stuff. Like, that girl is actually crazy. Marla is actually crazy. So then when I get her to Illinois, well, Missouri, I'm staying with my sister and I'm telling my son, we got to get out of my sister's house. Like, we got to leave Missouri. Some kind of way, we got to find a way to get out of there. And the reason why is because this is where the men who raped me live, right? My sister don't know. And I ain't really saying nothing to my sister. So I guess whatever they had in my car, they would just listen to me and my son and wait for me and my son to say something about somebody. That's all it was. They was just listening. And Marla, that's the kind of stuff she want to do. It's like she want to hear you saying something about her. Uh, Tracy, they all want to hear you saying something about them. So then they can say that you want a good person or you want a good friend. When in the first place, you put a device in my car. You assumed all these different things about me. You lied about who you were. And I'm the person that you feel like is not a good person. You see how, You see what I'm saying? So, um, so they tell my sister. So, my sister started talking about all the stuff my son went through at school. All the stuff that I think I was telling somebody or whatever, you know, about my son. And I'm like, I never discussed that with my sister. You see what I'm saying? Another tape conversation. She and her giving me information from another tape conversation. The same thing with Cecil Hall. He and her hollering at me, but he didn't tape the conversation. So now they just repeat back the same conversation like, 
Like, that's supposed to be law or something like that. Me and my son not doing nothing to nobody. We not talking about nobody. We just riding around processing all the shit that all these people doing to us because they feel like they didn't overheard us talking about them or talking about something or whatever, right? That's what they do. They they act like they, like, we even said something about them like that. Like, the conversation that we was having and, and the one they giving back to us was about them, okay? So, now we get to, my sister put me out the, the house. So, now I go to my grandma, my grandma, my great grandma house. My aunts live right now. So, I'm telling my, I'm telling my auntie about Cecil and how he raped me and all this different stuff. And she say, "Ah, oh, girl, you ain't telling no truth. You know, she started arguing with me. And then called my cousin over there, talking about I did something. So my cousin said, well, uh, no, because I was there. And it's like, you was where? You see what I'm saying? Where were you at? Where were you? You was there? You was there when Cecil raped me? You was there when Antoine raped me? Like, you was there? You couldn't have been. You was at the college when they did it. Like, when were you there? And so then she just started fighting me. I'm like, girl, listen to what you're telling. I'm telling you one thing. you telling me something totally fucking different. The same thing that happened at Confluence Academy. I'm telling them one thing. They still telling me something fucking different than I did. You was there? Where were you at? Why didn't you tell that nigga to get off me? Why didn't you help me fight him? They was there? You were there when that person was fucking raping me? Y'all, I went down to Belleville, the police station, so many times. In the middle of my anxiety, and say they're going to say, I got to go to... The lady going to say, well, go to the hospital. What hospital? I'm telling you that somebody is actually fucking following me and causing issues for me. I went down there, I think, five or six times. 2014, I'm telling you. I'm steady telling the police something is not right. And all they keep doing is letting these motherfuckers follow me. So then I'm talking to, even when I was talking to my sister, she gonna say, yeah, I had a lot of abortions. That was Marla. That was Marla. And she was lying anyway. She didn't went to the hospital talking about the hospital finna pay, talking about her insurance finna pay for an abortion. Love, insurance don't pay for abortions. Insurance don't pay for abortions. I don't know if she saw my past records or something and thought I had an abortion when I lost my baby. I lost the baby, love. I didn't, nothing else happened. I lost the baby. It wasn't an, an abortion. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I never did. I didn't know I was pregnant. I had an ectopic pregnancy. I passed out. There was a man there who helped me. One of my boyfriends. I have a straight up witness to whatever happened. But y'all out here recalling stories or reading shit, and y'all don't even know what happened. Marla is crazy. Brandon Clark is crazy. Crystal is crazy. And Crystal, she bipolar. So Crystal, she don't got no kind of emotions. She on that medication. She don't have no feelings. Y'all think I'm playing? That girl to sit there and tell you she don't care. Um, I ain't gonna be here. I'm not gonna. Um, I can't. You did that for I can't do that for you. You see what I'm saying? These are people who have numbed themselves because they're on medication. Because they actually have mental instability in their life. So I'm at the house. So then my cousin, I guess she wondering why I'm not going to fight it back. I'm not going to fight you back. For what? What the fuck I'm fighting you back for? When I get to the homeless shelter, that's when I noticed my cousin actually cut my throat. One of my cousins was holding me. So they cut my throat like I'm the girl in Dallas. It was a teacher in Dallas who had her had her neck. She had a line across her neck. That's what made me think of the story about the girl and how the guy had put her in the closet and cut her throat. Y'all see how don't none of this shit go together? So the person with the information just telling people different shit, right? Now I come here and the people listening, they still listening. That was the design for the school. These people have taken all of my stuff, all the stories, like they know what's going on. So they can come and repeat the stories back to me, right? Not, they didn't take an abuse. 2006, 
This man abused me. 2016, here come Victor Evosa trying to start a fight. I ain't even fight him. He grabbed my hair like the paper said Marcus did. The person that is following me is actually making people abuse me. It's not even a game. Twice, people have put their hands on me. Then they have also raped me too. And, I, and I'm steady telling everybody, like, this stuff ain't right. Like, what you're doing is not right. The lady next door, she want to come again, being ignorant and violent and stuff. Like, I don't have nothing to do with this lady. I won't argue with it because it's like, what's the point? You don't understand what you're doing. The person is telling you the wrong fucking thing because I'm not talking about you. I don't even know you. I barely talk about people. So all they can do is repeat the same shit that, I, that they've already told somebody else. Like, oh, yeah, she said this. She did that. I don't know these people. I never been in this city in my life. Never been here. Only thing I ever done is drove through her. I remember one time I had a friend that lived here. I came here twice with him. Stayed in his house. I was in college. We didn't drive around. We didn't see the sights, nothing. That's all that happened. I have never been here. I have never stayed here. Now, how in the hell, if I'm here, this person is able to follow me? Listen to my conversations and start shit with other people. So now we in a homeless shelter again. These people that put us out of the homeless shelter talking about we got five letters. She got five letters from Confluence Academy. You see what I'm saying? The little girls, they writing about what, oh, what they think I am and what I did to them. And I, I ain't done nothing to them. I was, I, I was out of school. I was out of week in, a, in the hospital. They was jealous because one little girl, her mother was moving. I told her mother she can come over and stay in my house. And the other little girl said she want to come over too. So now the little girl that don't supposed to be in my classroom has found a way to get the other kids riled up. The other four girls riled up, took them downstairs and told the counselor all this stuff. I'm coming back from the hospital trying to get my other two weeks out of school. Because I was out because I had to cut down my stomach. So I should have had eight weeks out for uh, maternity leave as opposed to six. And I lost the baby. They ended up giving me a week off and then firing me the next week because of these little girls. So now I'm at home. They didn't pay me. After they fired me, they paid me some money, right? So now I'm at home minding my own business again. I had to go back to my grandmama's house. Listen to what I'm telling y'all. So then my grandmama started talking about telling the, the maid person, don't say nothing to me, all this different stuff. In the process, I think I'm pregnant or something like that. So I asked the maid if I could use her insurance to get some, get the uh, plan B, right? Okay. So then my auntie tried to use that. They found, I guess my auntie found a toy. Then she wanted to start saying, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm masturbating, all this different stuff. I don't care. Then uh, she started not paying the bills. Okay, so then she going to call. She had me pay. She going to say, um, I said, I pay the electricity or I pay the internet. She gave me the account number and had me call, right, on a sheet of paper. Instead of giving me the bill, she got, so what that tell you? That tell you that I was paying for somebody else's shit. You see what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden in December, my daddy called me and said, you need to come down here and get your presents or something like that. I said, no, I'm okay because I don't want to be around my auntie then because I knew I was going to snap. I had already told my daddy they was abusing me and my son. I was going to snap. I had, I moved out in August. I moved out, I think, by September 1st out of my daddy's house down the street to 1405 West Main. I meet a woman named Nia. Nia started saying that she knew that I, that I was raped by one of those people who... The sons who um won the lottery. Oh, uh, I forgot their names. So I was raped by one of them uh, went in college. Okay? I went on a date with him or whatever. I went over to his house. He raped me. Okay? So I tell her that story. Um, Which is one I always forget because I actually went to therapy and everything, you know? So I tell her about that. I tell her about all the stuff that I had been through. These people still decide to try to abuse me they keep trying to abuse me it's always something like where somebody get upset about something and me and my son haven't done anything 
We haven't done anything. But they but the people around us are mad. Okay? They start arguments. They want to fight. They want to put their hands on me and my child. They want to change my child's situation. You know, making it seem like he dumb or he retarded or something. They want to, you see what I'm saying? It's always something. And we do not have any say so in what's going on around us at that point. That's why it's scary because it has been, the people around us are actually being manipulated by this person. He sat there, that man sat there and told that man what to say to me. He didn't have nothing to say to me because it's not about this white man. It's not about Brandon Clark. It's about me. This is what I made up for myself. Brandon Clark ain't the game. His name not on there. He shouldn't be around me or anything. And I don't know how I'm going I'm to get the warrant. If somebody know his address, please give it to me. Because that's all I need to get that no contact order or the warrant against him. This man is actually crazy. This is a dangerous situation. Because every time me and my son end up hurt and isolated. That man, Marcus Boy, actually tried to isolate me and abuse me. That's why he would tell me that all those people was trying to do something to me. Nasty to me. They weren't trying to do nothing. He was the one that was already doing it. Why would I go to court or go to tell somebody to give me a, a restraining order against this man if he didn't do nothing to me? I'm not just jumping up one day to say the neighbor next door wasn't trying to start arguments with me. The same neighbor, I got a neighbor on the other side of me. He did the same thing the other neighbors do. He stopped. The one next door did so why would I seal? So why would I go get the no contact order for them too? I haven't had a problem with them no more. After I said what I had to say about being raped and stuff and going through all this shit, that man left me the fuck alone. These this bitch next door, she's still coming outside like she got an attitude problem and stuff's wrong with her and starting arguments and saying shit to me that she don't need to fucking talk about. So why wouldn't it make sense to somebody? This bitch is over here still trying to start something with me. Now I'm going to get a no contact order because I don't fucking know you. So what do that tell you? Somebody is actually out here fucking stalking me. That shit wasn't supposed to go to him. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this nigga doing? I'm, out, I'm steady telling y'all I'm out here trying to do the right fucking thing and keep myself safe and healthy. These bitches in the, in the fucking grocery store following me with shades on, looking at me then turning the other way. Like, they don't, like I don't know who they, like what, I don't know who you are. I actually had to go off on a woman at Boys and Girls Club. I almost got, I, I probably wouldn't even been able to get my son Boys and Girls Club stuff. Every time me and my child go do something, one of these white motherfuckers show up and start doing that dumb shit. Repeating shit from my life or from yesterday when I was on the bus. Repeating shit from 2007 from that fucking classroom. Repeating shit from abuse. And I'm steady telling y'all that this shit is some fucking abuse and everybody's still doing the shit like it's okay. So this lady at Boys and Girls Club, my son is out there. He's sitting right there in Boys and Girls Club. That little boy starts sitting down talking to my son, basically having the same conversation my son already had with somebody else. My son didn't even notice. I went off on her. I was like, don't do that. I was like, we don't know you. So stop doing that to us and stop following us. And she is in there. So now I'm at Schnooks. <clears throat> Just the last day I went to Schnooks. I went to Schnooks the other day. That was like August 2019. So I went to Schnooks the other day. And this bitch is actually following me in Schnooks. She gonna come and come and, and stand in front of the aisle in Schnooks. Why would you do that? You know I hate you. The way these people make me feel is so fucking nasty. It's like somebody is actually touching me. Like I actually feel raped and molested. I'm not playing like they actually come and snatch all my fucking energy from me. Whenever this woman come outside over here, every time she do something, she'll come out there and stand out there like she got a like she got a mental disorder or something. I don't say nothing to her if I'm outside, right? I don't even pay her any attention. She'll just go back in her house fussing. I'm not going to be doing this shit. I can't stand it. I don't care nothing about you. 
That's all I'm trying to tell you. I don't know you. I don't give not two fucks about you or nothing you do. All these white people following me, I don't care nothing about them because I don't know you. That's not how it's going to go. Y'all have actually put had people fucking hit me and rape me. And then y'all still want to keep following me like I did something wrong to you. That's the point where I'm fucking flipping the fuck out. I didn't have a cop fucking arrest me because y'all keep having these motherfucking cops repeat the shit that a motherfucking abuser would say. Marcus, they had a they had a cops coming to my house saying stuff that they supposed to be helping me in a crisis situation. They'll be repeating the stuff that Marcus would say to me. When a cop arrested me, I say that's what Marcus would say. That's what that's from Brandon. Like it gotta be. I was like, this is abuse. And you know that motherfucker still arrested me and took me to fucking jail. I ain't never done nothing to them. And that was shit from my classroom. I told them, I said, I took, I used to tell my students, don't, you know, the cops, all they trying to do is get a record of you. They trying to get a picture of you so they can put you in the system. They did this shit to me in Plano. They did this shit to me in, in Alton. I'm just educating the kids. They going to sit up here and try to make me into a fucking criminal. That's all I'm trying to tell y'all. This shit don't have nothing to do with anybody. These are stories and stuff from my students in my classroom. Y'all out here actually following through with putting your hands on me. Putting me and my son out. Starting trauma for my child. And that's why I had to call CPS. I don't care how stupid it sounds. I call CPS because I'm like, this bitch over here is actually tra- creating traumatic situations. Whoever this is that's, <clears throat> that's following us, that's child abuse. It's child abuse. My son ain't done nothing to nobody. It ain't no reason for me to come back to this house and have an anxiety attack. My child is 10. He should not be trying to take care of me. And he ain't never done nothing to none of you. And all of y'all involving y'all self in shit that don't have nothing to do with you. Ease tap, e, uh, what is it? Eavesdropping, wire type tapping my phone, fucking going through my computer. That shit, you didn't have to do that. Me and my sisters and my friends already had stories that we had together. Joel, all y'all had to do was say whistle. I could call Joel. Jack, we got so many stories together. Jack was actually giving him, like, they, I don't know if they was listening to our full conversation. I tell Jack, no, I don't hold back nothing. Jack could be like, Shantae, you lying. I'd be like, Jack, I sure the fuck am. It didn't even happen like that. That was my best friend. Y'all have actually destroyed my situation with my best friend. I don't have nobody to talk to. I don't want to talk to y'all. I don't. I don't want everybody to know my fucking business. That's why I was private in the first place. Y'all actually put devices and shit in my fucking house. Fucking with me and my fucking son. And then not only that, y'all starting violence. Not a fucking where me and this motherfucker can create a garden or write a book together. Y'all are actually creating violence. And I'm not a violent person. All this shouting and shit, I'm tired of that shit too. But I'm actually fucking mad. I don't want to be touched by you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. Y'all some weird ass white people. Y'all think I'm playing? Y'all remind me of some, like some backwood shit. Y'all got me out here with motherfuckers that would actually probably kill me. That motherfucker, let me tell you something else. I'm walking down the street. This person stopped their car in front of me while I was doing a crosswalk. The cop was across the street. A white man, he didn't get pulled over. Like it was a little girl or something in the car. You see what I'm saying? Stupid shit. Though none of this shit got nothing to do with no damn white people. When I wrote that, it was for the students at the, at the school. Jack being number one. Because Jack is the one that will understand what I'm talking about. Jack, no. At the end of the day, all I want to do is see him do his one-man fucking show. The rest of y'all can kick fucking rocks. I don't even know y'all. 
Now I don't got my best friend. I don't got my family. Nothing. Because y'all up in here making up shit that don't even go together. My daddy outside. I ain't finna go to jail for you. That's from the fucking classroom. Why can't I be an intelligent person? Instead, I gotta still sit up here and fucking teach people how to do shit. I don't want to do that. I don't want you in my life. And that's the part where it's like fucked up. I gotta go to police, FBI. I gotta tell everybody the shit y'all doing. I hate y'all. It's like I can't. Like y'all can't figure out the hate. I should be able to move on with my life with new and different people. As soon as I create a relationship, here come another motherfucker, a uh, raper, beater. When I pay this, I don't know what y'all done told that man. That man should have never put his fucking hands on me. She, she didn't. I ain't done nothing. I've been over here cooking and cleaning. That's why it's perplexing. And ain't nobody ever asked. They said, why is it perplexing to her? Because all I do is take care of me and my child. And try to get better. Now, one fucking time have I stopped and been like, okay, yeah. I'm going to start an argument with this bitch. Y'all actually be stopping y'all fucking car to talk to me. Y'all actually follow me to places I go to to follow me. Just so you can give me a fucking anxiety attack with your nasty feelings. Y'all nasty people. Something wrong with y'all. Your energy is not matching my energy. Leave me the fuck alone. I should not have to come back to my house with any type of nothing. It's child abuse. Me and my son are not putting ourselves in any type of situation. Y'all bringing that shit to us. Now my son don't want to go to school. Illinois shit. Because y'all racist. Prejudice. Don't want to listen. You don't care because it's the color of my fucking skin. I can't be intelligent. Oh my God, I got to be a dumb bitch. They be asking you on the phone, are you retarded? Did somebody tell you can't read? Did somebody put you in remedial? Or asking me those questions. No, I'm not. I said, but gifted is special education. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I don't know what the joke is. I don't know what the gag is. I don't know nothing about it. I don't know why it's so important for you not to let me have my fucking life. But that's why I wrote in the first place is because this motherfucker was actually taken from me. Now, as a woman, would you want to be in my situation where you have no transportation? You got men following you around. You got crazy women following you around. You got people putting you in violent situations, abusing you and your child. Now, what part of that sound like a fucking dream to you? Even though you're intelligent enough to write. Even though you're intelligent enough to create shows. Even though you're intelligent enough to get your ass to get, You see what I'm saying? No, y'all gonna try to break me down. And that was what it said. It said I don't let it break me or something like that. Why would you do that? For what? I'm a black fucking woman growing up in goddamn America, motherfucker. I got so many slim chances of fucking making it. And I'm actually intelligent. And creative. So why would you still want to break me after all that shit? If you read my whole fucking rap sheet. Or all the dumb shit these motherfuckers did done to me. Why would you come back and have them do it to me again? I can't smile. Nah, we gotta fuck that up today. I can't put on a hat. I can't dance in the street. I can't walk down the street. I can't skip. I can't say hi. I can't say bye. All y'all doing is repeating the same shit. If you ask my students, they'll tell you, we miss you and don't like that. Why? Because it's for you now to create you. It's not about me. 
Now go off and do you. No, they got to let me see that they repeated me in, 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 in this nasty motherfucker in front of me. All of y'all make me feel ill. That's why my anxiety feel like that. A white man molested me at a pool. I feel like all of y'all some kin to him and you know he did it. That's what it feel like. A white man molested me at a pool. He went up to the to the uh, to the bathroom to try to molest my sister too. Then on top of that, I get into an acting class. A black man and other black men wanted to hear my moan. So I think they might have made some kind of films when I was sleeping with one of the guys. So older men actually make me feel kind of skeevy too. So at what point? Is any of this helping me? They followed me to rape me. The man that knew he wanted to rape me, he met me one day when I told them no. In my apartment. The apartment that I didn't want him to come into as a 17-year-old girl. Because when I first started college, I wasn't 18 yet. My birthday, not to the end of August. I was a 17-year-old girl. And even if I was grown, even if I did turn 18, that man shouldn't have been in there in my fucking face telling me he trying to fuck me. This man waited three years. Three years to get the chance to fucking rape me. Do y'all understand? What part of don't fucking follow me or y'all not get it. That man waited three years to rape me. And so I told him no. I didn't like it when I saw him. I didn't even want him in a fucking house. And he waited, he waited three fucking years to rape me. Not only that I was raped by some chess, whatever, the, whoever the fuck the millionaire people are. I don't know who the fuck they are. It, it, it's so fucking, it's annoying. It's belittling. And if, if I'm telling you that all this shit happened to me and you still out here trying to figure out some shit, you don't need to figure out because it's not about you. Because you're not my fucking friend. You know my family. I don't want y'all in my fucking life. Like, it's like, what part of that don't y'all get? All I'm telling you to do is leave me alone. I just want to be able to be safe and take care of my child. Instead, I'm in danger. Y'all actually have me in danger. You have me in danger every fucking day. Whether you know it or not. Throughout this whole thing, nobody should have put their fucking hands on me. Nobody should be trying to start arguments with me. If I don't know that person, don't have it speaking to me. I don't want to talk to you. Just because I have a friendly conversation, I can't even do that. This nigga up her, uh, oh, uh, she acting. Don't you think that that's a, that that abusive shit got something to do with it too? This nigga beat my ass, telling me I'm acting because I'm nice to people. Telling me the people that's nice to me not good enough. Marla doing the same thing. I didn't help you. And you gonna sit up here and think that. And you gonna sit up here and turn on me like that. Girl I don't know you. I'm just telling you. So you can have a better life yourself. I told you my story. So you yourself can do better than me. She didn't create a whole fucking competition against me. And I wanted. I was her friend. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Like, y'all really have to stop. It can't be me against me because you are actually calling out the actions of something else. I can't get better because y'all keep trying to fuck with me. Some fucking nasty ass white man. And it can't, and it, everybody, uh, yeah. This man in fucking, I'm in, uh, therapy. This nigga talking about, yeah, we just, we just repeat this stuff to torture, to torture her. You know, I'm telling the lady, I said, that's what they've been doing to me. They actually have been torturing me. And she acting like she can't hear nothing. She just smiling like she don't hear nothing that's going on. Like they don't hear nothing that nobody's saying. 
It's not right. It's not right. I have actually contacted all these people. I'm not joking. The police. The state police. The FBI. I don't even think this shit getting out. I think they wiretapped everything where it don't even go anywhere. I'm trying to be a better person for myself. I'm the writer. I'm the person that that was supposed to go to. If it's about me, it goes to me. That shouldn't go to you. Because you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. Everything got to be so dramatic. I'm not trying to do no shit like that. Why y'all trying to put me through that bullshit? I'm not an actress. I'm a writer. And it's, it's like, why can't they just stop? Like at some point, when are they going to get the fucking clue? This girl is a woman. How hard is it for us to make it and get jobs and all that shit? For us to do some of the shit we want to do. Instead, this is what y'all want to do? Every day you want to abuse me in some kind of way? I need to have a life too. I don't need to be in this fucking house all day. And my son don't either. Anyway, it's Shantae. Brown sugar talk under black unicorns. I don't know how y'all need to leave me alone. Don't talk to me. 